to talk more on this issue, we have Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu. He's here with me in the studio. He is the Director General, Nigeria Center for Disease Control. It's good to have you on News Extra tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Well, West Africa countries, you know, we've been on our toes because of the reoccurrence of the Ebola virus. Now we have, or we are faced with this coronavirus right from China. What does this portend? You see, I, I think um, the first thing to give Nigeria credit for was the response to the Ebola outbreak a few years ago that led to the establishment of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. So we now have a, a prostata with a, a core responsibility to prevent, detect, and respond to infectious diseases in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we've been working uh, on a, a whole series of infectious disease outbreaks over the last few years, increasing our capacity to deal with them. So right now, this is really the time to be grateful for that investment in our country. <laughs> uh, so now you have a new virus, a completely new virus that has emerged. It's a coronavirus, it's a family of viruses. Some of them cause a very severe illness, but this particular one, from everything we've seen at the moment, uh, causes fairly mild to fairly severe, but no, the number of deaths from cases has been very low. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't actually describe it as a deadly virus because you know, we've had six deaths from 400 cases. But it is new. There's a lot of new information we're learning every day about the virus, about how it's transmitted. Initially, we thought it was just transmitted from animals to humans, mm -hmm. something we call zoonotic transmission. Mm -hmm. But over the last few days, we've established, colleagues have established that there's some human-to-human -human transmission possible. So what we are doing as a center is really working with our partners, with WHO, with um, uh, at the Africa Center for Disease Control, and all other partners in order to prepare ourselves to learn as much as we can on this new virus in order to provide Nigerians and experts mm -hmm. here on the information that they need to control this new disease. So, so but, uh, Doctor, what precautionary measures should Nigerians take? You know, we earlier said that Nigerians love to travel. Yeah. You know, we are mobile, we're always here and there for businesses and pleasure. So what do you think the precautionary measures uh, we should take you know, to prevent this from coming in. Yeah. So the first thing we did once uh, this outbreak was recognized, we'll call a multi-sectoral uh, meeting, we call it an emergency operation center, pulling together all the relevant partners. So there was just a report by FAN, but critically our, our major, major partner in this regard are called the Port Health Services. So we've worked the Port Health Services, given them the information uh, they need, and with that they have strengthened screening at the point of entry. This is the thermal screening. If you have a fever, then you're pulled aside. And okay, like the ones questions. at the airport. Yes, but okay. the key question is whether you have a travel history to that district in China. So all the cases in all the countries you mentioned have all had a travel history to Wuhan district in China. So at least at the moment, that is critical. So are you ill? Have you visited that mm -hmm. district? And, and then we can start looking further. Now, what we will advise Nigerians, basically, are two things. Mm -hmm. Firstly, there are two groups of Nigerians that are most with those going and those yes, coming, and those coming back. In. If you're going, if you're going to Wuhan or anywhere in China for now, you know, we would ask you, please con go on, but don't uh, avoid contact with wild animals, with f uh, markets mm -hmm. where uh, animals and food is sold, seafood and all of that. Please avo avoid those environments completely. Uh, for those coming back, um, if you do have respiratory symptoms, you know, um, from anything from uh, catarrh, cough, mm -hmm. to actually uh, some form of early stage pneumonia and fever, um, please, when you come into the airport, do let the port health authorities know that they're for you. And if you don't have a fever, the other thing to remember is not everyone has a fever at the beginning. Okay. So you might get infected. Uh, come in without a fever and then develop a fever subsequently, then please let uh, NCDC know on our website you find okay. a toll-free number and we will arrange for a sample to be collected and a diagnosis to be confirmed. Okay. But the key thing, the travel history uh, to that part of the world is the most critical information in making a significant diagnosis at the moment. Well, you've, you've, uh, you've so said a lot, Doctor. Yes, we've fought Ebola and then, you, you know, we won. And now we don't hope, or we're not, we're not hoping that this would come to Nigeria. But, you know, um, what is Nigeria's level of preparedness, you know, talking about a response now? You know, so many people 
You know, when we talk about high risk of importation of the virus into Nigeria because of how mobile our people are. So you talked about that. You talked about uh, Nigerians traveling and coming in. So what would you say, for example, what if it comes in mystically? Yeah. So Nigerians may not know, but there are a group of people working 24-7 every day of the week. Uh, doing this work. So are you saying we should just rest our mind? No, I'm saying that firstly, you should trust government institutions, uh, the NCDC, our partners, uh, state public health teams. We actually do have a group of people that have the expertise, firstly to make the diagnosis, secondly to respond. But the other thing is, listen, infectious diseases, there's no magic bullet. You know, we all have a responsibility around prevention. Mm -hmm. um, your own personal hygiene, washing your hands, making sure you ca carry out respiratory hygiene, covering your mouth when you're sneezing and all of that, making sure your environment is clean. So there's a lot of personal responsibility that really uh, got elevated during the Ebola response time that so we need to reinstate during a time like this mm -hmm. and maintain, not only when we have an outbreak. Oh, not only when we have an outbreak. I actually wanted to talk about, you know, the health-seeking behavior of Nigerians. You know, like you said, we have, you know, this... <laughs> I would say behavior of, okay, when it's here, we'll do, we'll try as much as possible to curb it, but we cannot prevent it. So um, what would you say Nigerians should do? Or you as the Director General now of uh, Disease Center for Disease Control, right? So as the DG and as the organization, what would you do? Would you sensitize people now out there? Would you go to places, marketplaces to sensitize people? Because so many people don't know about this coronavirus. So at the moment, mm -hmm. what we need to do is general information. I, I wouldn't go into the market square yet because to be honest, people are dying of other infectious diseases. Every day we work hard to prevent cases of cholera, meningitis, Lassa. These are real diseases that we are facing and our organization faces every day. So we will continue advising Nigerians to work across the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. If we have a new infectious disease, we'll use the, what we've learned over the last few years okay. to implement a response. But really, the, the two things, the three things really is um, you talked about uh, health-seeking behavior. Mm -hmm. The other thing is about a lot of our habits. Okay. You know, we, we, whenever in Nigeria, many of us have a fever. We think we're all doctors, so everyone ha can make a think we can make a diagnosis of malaria. Mm -hmm. So and things like that, I start jumping on pills. So we've been preaching to Nigerians to listen. Not every fever is malaria. There are many other things it can be, okay. and we have the test to make that diagnosis. But you have to give us the opportunity to do so by testing before you treat. Mm -hmm. And that way we can say, okay, is this malaria? And then go ahead and treat for it. If it's not, then we start looking for one of those other causes of fever mm -hmm. and, and, and manage that. So there, there's a lot we need to do okay. collectively as a society to reduce the spread of infectious diseases. You, you, we, we watched a report you know, from Undo and uh, we had of uh, you know, a lesser fever and that of Undo and Kano. So uh, can you bring us up to speed with the efforts at, you know, dealing with the situation? Yeah, so um, over the past few years, uh, we, you know, we've had a lot of Lassa fever cases, specifically uh, the la highest incident have been in three states, Ondo, Edo, and the Boeing states. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm particularly proud of the work done in Ondo. You know, <laughs> three years ago, there was no treatment center, there was no lab, very little capacity. If you go to FMC or one now, you know, we've really collaborated with the state government mm -hmm. in, in Ondo state and worked to develop a center that has the expertise. They have a new, brand new molecular lab okay. uh, so that the tests can be done in that uh, facility, preventing, uh, you know, reducing the time mm -hmm. to treatment. So from the beginning of the year, there's been a real surge, you know, uh, and we're all working together to manage it. But okay. I, I'm very confident on the team in, in our work. If I can say one thing about Kano, because it's also of particularly importance to us. Yes, I wanted to say that. I said we've had the cases of Kano, even though we've not, you know, really, you know, played the, the film. So can you tell us more? on uh, the Kano issue. Yeah, so in Kano, you know, there have not been too many cases reported in the past. So there's been a lot of anxiety. What we've had are, are two healthcare workers okay. who were infected and unfortunately passed away. Uh, they, pro they managed the case of probable Lassa and they probably did not carry out 
full infection prevention and control um, while they're managing that case. And it has caused a lot of anxiety. And now we already have a team in Kano supporting the Amino Kano Teaching Hospital. And we're working with the state team. We've provided prophylaxis for all the healthcare workers and tried to reassure them and reduce the anxiety. But the, the key thing about that kind of thing is mm -hmm. it's uh, something we have to all learn. Okay. You know, every doctor has to use universal precautions when they manage patients. So when you talk about universal precautions, yes. I don't really... The basic thing okay. you need to know is doctors must wear gloves. Okay. They're simple things. Let's just use gloves. Every doc, you, nobody comes in with Lassa fever written on their face. Mm -hmm. the, the patient that come into a hospital could as well be malaria, it could be influenza, it could be Lassa. And Lassa is really transmissible from person to person, person okay. if you don't use gloves. So this is really an appeal to all our healthcare workers in Nigeria, especially now. Please, if you ever took a risk okay. of not doing that, do it. Right. Please, uh, as Nigerians, as citizens, mm -hmm. We must insist that our doctors use gloves. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy to ask. Okay. I know we live in a hierarchical yes. society. But please, okay. everyone must come, right. have the confidence to insist that their doctors and nurses put on gloves when they're Thank examining you. Thank you so, so much, uh, Dr. Chukwe Hekwazu. It's you. really good to have you on News Extra. And that was a very interesting and educative one, I must say. He is the Director General, Nigeria Center for Disease Control.